Now that we have the ability system components set up on both our player character and our anime character here, and I have fixed some compile errors that were unrelated to the gameplay ability system between videos, we can now get started with attributes. Because what are gameplay abilities for? Gameplay abilities are to apply gameplay effects, and gameplay effects will change attributes. That is the entire framework that is the entire basis of how the gameplay ability system works so a gameplay ability might be attack which will play an attacking animation and then when you make contact with your sword on an enemy that will trigger a gameplay effect to take place and that gameplay effect might be something like damage that gameplay effect will be programmed to change an attribute on the target actor in this case that will be enemy to decrease its HP by a certain amount. You can make this as complex or as easy as you would prefer. Today we're just going to add some HP and maybe like stamina to both of our characters. So the way we do that is through C++. So you need to make your attribute sets, which are kind of like groups of attributes in C++. So let's make a new C++ class here and look for the word attribute and we can make a attribute set and if we click on next we can say whatever it should be called so let's call this something like basic attribute set it will be something that we can pretty much give to any character right the enemies are going to need hp and stamina but so will the player and maybe so will some breakable objects we can give that to them you could even break this out into separate attribute sets, just one for only HP, so that breakable objects don't have a stamina, which they might not need, but sometimes it's nice to just have that second attribute in there to begin with. So let's create this class, and that will generate a new header file and a new CPP file for us. And here I'm going to do a little bit of copy-pasting of some code, and you're just going to have to follow along with me, because here we start using some macros in C++. If you have to write out everything that these macros do, it's going to get even more mind-boggling and you're probably not going to follow along. I know I wouldn't. So we have macros that the plugin gives to us that we can use to make our lives a lot easier. So what we do is we first define a attribute accessor and we do that up top here uh, above the class itself. So what this does is this just gives us some simple getters and uh, setters for like the property names and uh, giving it an initter, giving it an initial value on the game play. That will now happen automatically because we can define this uh, through this macro. And these are just some of the basic functions. We'll get back to these in a moment uh, when I'm talking a little bit more about the upsides and downsides of using gameplay attributes here. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to make some U properties for every single attribute that we want. So starting out with, we can just set this to public and we can uh, set a U property, which will set to being blueprint read only. We don't want to write directly to this because that is what our gameplay effects are going to be doing. Those are going to be changing these attributes. You don't really want to change these attributes directly. You're always going to do this through gameplay effect. And then the category, we can just call this something like attribute. Now, part of the reason, and this is why uh, GitHub is telling me to set something uh, about replication, part of the reason that you might want to use the gameplay ability system is because it is very well built for having gameplay abilities like attacks and um, ranged attacks and all that kind of stuff working on network replication. So if you're making a multiplayer game, um, a multiplayer action RPG, a multiplayer uh, something like a MOBA, for instance, which has a lot of different abilities that you can execute, the gameplay ability system will take care of a lot of headache for you that you usually have to deal with yourself when doing that kind of thing over a network. We are not going to particularly dive into the network replication part of things. I think it is important to first and foremost understand the very fundamental basics of how everything works, and then you can take a step back and look at, okay, so now how does that work on a network level as well? And then we declare the F gameplay attribute data with the name of our attribute. In this case, that will be health. And then we use that macro that we made up here, the attribute accessor. 
and we put in the class name so that's the name of our attribute set and then the attribute itself again github copilot is doing that for me very very intelligently and this is how you set up a single attribute in your attribute set so let's also i'm going to call it mana uh, just because it is easier to type out than stamina every single time uh, but let's also make one mana and now we have an attribute set which has health in it and it has mana now we want to give these attributes to our characters so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our tutorial basics character the thing that last time we added the gameplay ability system components into and in there we're going to in c++ also add these attributes it's not going to be too complicated but we want to add these in c++ as well so here we're also going to add another u property and we're going to set this one to add it anywhere or add it default only that doesn't really matter uh read blueprint only as well the category we're going to keep in gas and allow private access will set to true as well this will be a const meaning that it's constant it's going to be uh, read only we're not going to write to it because again that is specifically something that the gameplay effects will be doing we won't be doing that directly uh, and we need to forward to clear this so this will be a class of type u basic attribute set pointer and we'll call this basic attribute set something like that doesn't really matter what you call it just make it something that is clear as to what it actually is we'll move into the cpp file for our character here now and in the cpp file in begin play first and foremost we're going to check is valid for our ability system component it usually should be there's no reason for it not to be valid but it still is a good thing to check then if it is valid we're going to get those basic attributes set eh? and that one will set equal to our ability system component and then use the function called get set with the template in here of u basic attribute set and what that does is it just initializes this attribute set pointer to have uh, an attribute set given to it so this is pretty much the equivalent of what you will be doing here in the constructor with create default sub object uh, but instead you do it in begin play for the attribute sets and you do it with this function so anytime you add a new attribute set to your character you're going to want to also do this in c plus plus and of course if we're going to do this we also need uh the include that goes with that so we need to hashtag include our basic attribute set dot h the attribute sets also need a include here for the ability system component, uh, which has to do with the macros here for the attribute accessors. Uh, those make use of the ability system component, so you do need those. And with all those includes added in, we should now be able to compile this thing and I'll be able to go into blueprints and actually show you how to access these properties and how you can work with them. So if we now go into our player character we'll be able to uh, see if we zoom in a little bit here we can get our basic attribute set and from that basic attribute sets we can get our health and the health usually will probably be used to if you have something like a health value it just being a float in this case it is a struct so let's break that struct and that gets us a base value and a current value value and this is really where we get into the interesting stuff because these attributes have a concept of a base value so that would be the value that you would usually be at but also a current value so if you have a potion or maybe a curse on a object or whatever that increases your attack by 20 percent or maybe decreases it by 30 percent or something like that you can actually change the current value of that without changing the base value so for temporary boosts or nerfs to one of your stats you don't have to then like cache that information somewhere else because these attributes just keep track of a base value to begin with which is very very nice they also have a concept of having a minimum value and a maximum value you can't access those through here unfortunately and that is coming back to what i talked about before in these accessors 
these macros don't set up for you to get access to the minimum and maximum value and nowhere in the gameplay ability system native code does it actually use the values for minimum and maximum it doesn't automatically clamp it to uh between those two then your base value will be the amount of health you currently have and then your current value will be that base value but after some calculations with maybe buffs and debuffs applied to it hopefully that all makes sense so let's get a little bit more into setting these up because if we go into our ability system component here we can set a default starting data and that has two members in it the attributes itself so we can set our basic attribute set and then we can make a data table that has values in it for whenever we spawn in an enemy or spawn in a player or whatever what are going to be their basic starting values so let's uh for now just in the content folder here make a data table which you can find in miscellaneous and then in here we can find a data table and i believe it is attribute meta data that we want to have so we make just new table for now and in this table we can add a couple of rows and here it is quite important that you give the row names the proper corresponding names so what you want to name them this is not up for interpretation you want to name them the class name so in our case it would be u basic attribute sets and then a dot and then the name of the attribute so that would be health for us and then the second one would be mana one very important last note here is that i just copied over the class name from the c class you don't actually need to include the u in this data table so you can forget the u just everything after the u the u is just a prefix that unreal uses in a lot of its variable names like something is either a u or an or an a or a whatever there's a lot of prefixes that they use uh, you can just ignore that for now the name that you gave the class that's going to be the thing that they're looking for and this gets you uh, those base values you'll note that this doesn't have a current value because you don't really need to initialize that but then it also has the minimum and maximum value and as i said before this doesn't really do anything by default but this structure does give you the ability built into set these minimum and maximum values and maybe do something with them but you'll have to do that through your own if you want to make use of that just as a quick uh fyi we're not going to get into that right now we might uh go into a little bit more of that advanced uh stuff in the future but as i said in the previous video i really want to just get this setup out of the way so that we have this setup and we can go into blueprint and we don't have to look at c if you wanted to do that you would need to um extend this gameplay attribute data to also uh, include a min max value and then uh, use that and then add some uh, functions to get those values uh, out of there as well for the most part uh, this can be really really powerful and if you're planning to use this on a bigger scale i would really recommend that you do do something like this and you do experiment with it a little bit for the most part what is actually uh, probably the easiest way to go about doing this is to simply just make a attribute for max health and make a separate attribute as well for your max mana in this case it's not the most ideal circumstance uh, of course and you are better off implementing your own clamping system with the min and the max value that the opportunity is giving you to do but for now this will work and this will get us out of the c a lot quicker and just be able to use blueprint and get to work on the actual gameplay experience that we're going to be building here because i don't want to get stuck in c for too too long so with all that said we can now uh, set our new data table here and that will take this attribute set and look up in this data table hey is there any attributes that match anything in this set if so we're going to use uh, the information from here to set that so let's set the uh, base value of both our health and our mana to being 100 for now and let's actually add in uh, our max health and max mana as well 
and we'll set both of those to 100 as well for the time being again this is a bit of a roundabout way of doing it but it is the most straightforward and easiest way to do it once you get used to the system as a whole uh, you have every opportunity to dive back into the c plus plus side of things and start working with using this min value and this max value if you really really want to for now i will just show you in event tick if we get our basic attribute set and we uh, get our health and from that we can get the and we can just split that structure pin we don't need to use the break node we can also just split structure pin uh, and we'll just print string and we'll print out our base value and you will see now that on initialization i have a hundred health because that's being printed out and that's where we're going to leave things for right now so we have the ability system component set up we have health attributes we have mana attributes we even have max health and max mana in a bit of a roundabout way but it will work fantastically fine trust me so i think next time it's finally time that we dive into gameplay effects and see how we can manipulate these things either on ourselves like using mana to attack or maybe otherwise on a enemy so that we can damage that enemy and how to drive that damage and all that kind of stuff and a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas, 